Hi, my name is Daniel Howell. I am the curriculum manager for building services at Tottenham. And yeah, we teach a number of courses over here. Um, they're all, uh, well, the majority of them are, are accredited courses. We do some short courses as well. Um, and in building services, we look at mainly plumbing and electrical, uh, accredited by city and guilds. Um, yeah, they recognise courses and they, they can build towards apprenticeships. We also run apprenticeship programmes. Um, generally, the courses, uh, credit courses run over a year. Um, there's a number of, of different routes that we take, slightly so different routes for, for younger people and, and, and older people. And the, the structure of those course, courses differ. Um, with, the, with the older learners, uh, having nine nine exams and, and multiple assessments, um, whereas the younger learners uh, actually just have one exam at, at the end of the year, which can make things a bit trickier in some ways, but but it's a bit easier and all that, you know. Um, yeah, so they, they get some real good practical experience here, and yeah, it can be quite intense, uh, particularly for for the adults because there's a lot more actual assessment going on. Um, whereas with the 16s, 18s, it's it's a lot more training, um, which can then build up to the to the final exams, which um, are, are towards the end of the year. Uh, some good good facilities here. Um, so some some nice workshop space, plenty of plenty of space for the learners to, to work in. A uh, good healthy environment. We've got good extraction uh, in there for 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 the flux and, uh, and stuff, which we we work with um, when we sold it. And yeah, I mean, it's the good the good thing about it is there's there's not a significant cost. The um, I think courses at the moment are, are free for for everybody, you know, which is fantastic. And yeah, we've had some really good feedback from from previous learners, and they've they've said they've really enjoyed it. There you go. That's a uh, plumbing at, well plumbing and plumbing and building services at, at Tottenham. You're muted then, Paul. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, yeah, hi there. Obviously, my name is Lenny Watson. Um, I'm one of the curriculum managers at Tottenham also, and I also cover Enfield Centre. Um, we co um, I cover a range of crafts at Tottenham, and I also cover crafts and building services at Enfield. Um, like Dan, we cover electrical plumbing, but I also cover bricklaying, um, multi-skills, and carpentry. Um, again, similar to Dan's um, courses, we run year-long courses. We also run short courses. Um, we have got a range of age groups. Um, over at Tottenham, we deliver from the age of um, 14, right up until obviously adult years. Um, the number can go from anything but above 60, 70. We've, we've got a range of learners that want to obviously come back into education and learn new skills. Um, we offer, I, I believe we offer a good range of um, qualifications, um, level one, level twos and level threes. Um, obviously the age groups, like I said, they differ. Um, adult learners, what we have seen in, in, in recent times is that a lot more adult learners are coming through the doors because they're trying to obviously reskill, upskill, um, and there's a lot of changes um, between sectors that are currently taking place. Um, we have seen that the market has changed significantly and there are a lot more people that are now interested in um, construction as a whole, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, our tutors are experts. They're trained, um, fully ready to deliver to the learners um, that we get coming through the doors. Um, with me, I've currently got two of our learners, um, Daniel, who's doing a level one plumbing, um, and we've got Bobby, who's doing level one bricklaying. So um, I'll kind of get things going. And Dan, if you want to kind of kick it off with Daniel, if possible. Yeah, please, if you could introduce Hi, yourself. I'm Daniel. I've been studying um, level one plumbing for a couple of months now. And yeah. You've been enjoying it, Daniel? Yeah, I've been enjoying it. It's good. Excellent, man. What, what have you been doing? Um, currently, we've been making a lot of like frames, plastic frames made out of, um, well, currently we're doing low carbon still, making a whole yep. frame with that. 
What, what, what have you been, what materials have you been using to join, join the plastic? Um, we've been using tees, um, elbows, and we've been using pipe cutters every time to make sure our measurements are right and correct. Uh, good. Have you learned about X dimensions yet? And, um, yes, on the on the tees, making sure that we measure them correctly. Good stuff, good stuff. Tony? You want to say something, chap? Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Tony Griffin. I'm the head of construction um, for Tottenham and Enfield. I've just been listening to the comments made there. What do you think the biggest uh, increase has been in learning number in, in our plumbing area? Where do you think it sits? Uh... What, do you mean the number of students that we've, we've got enrolled? Yeah, well, the predominantly. Um, I think well, there's a most most learners are are, are sort of nineteen plus. Yeah. Um, but we've got a got a decent a decent number of, of sixteen to eighteens at, at, over here at, at Tottenham. What would be your next steps, Daniel? What what you're looking at your future progression? Um, hopefully to move on to level two and then get onto level three, hopefully after that, and then try and get myself onto a plumbing apprenticeship. With a oh, company. Excellent, excellent. But yeah, um, so it's good to hear you've been in, enjoying your your course so far. Um, if, what, what have you thought of the teaching so far? Have you have you made some good progress towards your, your exams? Yeah, we've done one exam so far, and it was it was a good, good exam about health and safety, making sure we know the rules and what we need to do in the future to make ourselves safe. Um, so I mean, what? Tell me about safety. What What do you know? Um, always check around your surroundings. There might be people that don't know, like the, the say health and safety, and make sure that they know what's going on. If yep. Your supervisor, make sure that everyone understands the health and safety and is doing their part to protect others. Good. Do you know about safety signs? Um, we're learning a few of them. Yeah, about yeah. the blue, green, and the red. Absolutely. Do you remember what each one is? No, I completely forgot that. I'll come back to you, man. I'm sure. I'll come back to you, I'm sure. But no, it's all cool. Um, yeah, good. I'm glad you've been enjoying your, your course. And um, yeah, nice one, man. Keep it up. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Um, the next person that we do have here is um, Bobby. Bobby is one of our level one bricklayers. Um, Bobby is a more... Um, experienced bricklayer as he's actually currently working as a um, bricklayer's mate, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Bobby, do you want to introduce yourself, please? Hi, right. I'm Bobby and I'm studying level one bricklaying at Connell Enfield Centre. Right. I'm, uh, I currently work as a hod carrier at the moment, so I've done this to boost like, my career and eventually, after level one and level two, get an uh, apprenticeship uh, but be an improver for a bit and then be fully qualified bricklayer. Fantastic. So how how have you found your experience so far within the college? Uh, I've been, to, I went to CNI as well. I thought this okay. is a better college, it's better run in my opinion, personally. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's good. Te teachers are good. Facilities are good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, so. yeah. So have you learned any new skills? Obviously, like you said, you're working on building sites yeah. at the moment and um, obviously working with experienced bricklayers. Yeah. But have you found that you've learned any new skills whilst you've been here so far? Uh, well, yeah, I've done an apprenticeship before, but it didn't work out because of circumstances, whatever. Yeah. But uh, I didn't learn as much on there because I was doing stuff like insulation all the time and they weren't actually letting me lay bricks. So okay. I was very rusty when I come here. I feel like I've enhanced my skills a lot okay. since I've come here. So, so, so you feel that you was more restricted when you was yeah. working with the previous company you, you, yeah. that you had your yeah. apprenticeship with. So what's the difference between the company you're working with now and the company that you was working with before then? Well, currently now, I'm only a hod carrier, but yeah. then I was an apprentice. But for now, I'm appreciated for what I do, basically. Okay. Because And the pay as well. <laughs> because I was getting apprenticeship wage to do my current job to yeah. be a hod carrier okay so uh, so, so so in terms of like where would you say that the the skills 
that you've inherited have really yeah. shone through? Where would you say that you, that your skills are really shining through? What in the position uh, you're in now? For example, I know how the, your muck or mortar should be ideally with what materials you're using, such as bricks make it a bit wetter, blocks make it a bit drier. But I've uh, learned, I must say here, is how to gauge stuff properly okay. a bit better. And Could you just elaborate a bit more on that when like, you say you've learned uh, that? For example, the tutor is very specific on making your work the right gauge and the right width, the height to meet specifications because if it's wrong especially in the building game it could affect the whole project um, immensely and could change the whole drawings again okay and what about the health and safety aspects of that how have you have you really tapped into that side of it obviously i know you're working on building sites at the moment but um is it kind of like wear what you want or is there any types of specific pp that you need to wear uh well, we have to wear boots all the time because it's a work area. We could drop stuff on our feet because in steel toe caps, they pre prevent you from injury. What if we're cutting bricks or cutting blocks to size? We have to use gloves because uh, we use the hammer to protect our fingers and we must use safety goggles in case muck or, or from the brick or a bit of the brick gets in your eye okay. to affect your safety. So what about if you're um, working at height, for instance? So, so if somebody's working at height, is there any additional PP that you need to wear? At height? Uh, so you're on a lower ground, yeah, as an example, and someone's working above you. Uh, if someone's a height, it could be a hard hat, depending on how high they are. And if they're very high, a harness is needed, depending on the circumstance, of course. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So... Where could you see yourself really going forward with this um, from the skills that you have learned and that you're currently learning? Yeah, well, I would like to uh, get an apprenticeship after this first year because for apprenticeships, I was level two with Bricklayer. Yeah. And then after apprenticeship, just hone my skills a bit more in the next two or three years after that because it all comes with time. You're not just going to be the best in a day. Yeah. you got to get your speed up, your just everything proper before you go out and just go into a new build all these new buildings and then okay so in terms of like obviously moving forward with your education obviously i know you mentioned before that you're doing some insulation work quite a yeah. lot um do you feel that you're fully clued up about insulation or do you feel that you can still enhance that uh i could definitely be enhanced but i I do understand it, but yeah. to an extent, because it was limited for me. But yeah, I do understand the main aspects of the insulation, obviously why it's there yeah. and how to fit it. You have to make it tight so nothing gets in, etc. Yeah. Okay. Because obviously, um, like one of the courses that we offer currently at the Enfield Skills Academy is actually to do with insulation. Um, so there's obviously that, that, that aspect that you could also look into which um, would be absolutely fantastic. It would enhance your skills. We've got um, great trainers over there that specialise in, in, in um, insulation mm. and just making energies more uh, and making it more energy efficient at the end of the yeah. day. Because obviously we, we need to kind of move away from certain types of technology and we need to move in the correct direction, as, as obviously you are fully aware. Um, I'm sure Gary would have spoken to you about a lot of these things anyway, um, especially with, with regards to bricklaying. Yeah. Um, different ways of keeping your house warm without having to turn on the electric. Uh, yeah. um, so your um, heating, as an example. Yeah. So um, these different types of methods. If you are interested, of course, we can then obviously open those doors for you as well. Um, but thank you very much for joining us. Um, much appreciated. Um, and is there any questions that you have for? No, us? That's, that's okay. Thank you. Yeah, lovely. Thank that's you very fine. much. So as you can see, obviously, we've had two learners in today um, that have both spoken about um, their experience so far. Um, very pleasant experiences. Um, guys are fully aware of their pathways and the direction that they want to move in, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, obviously, as we saw, there was a key emphasis on apprenticeships from both of them, which I think is, again, amazing um, that they're aware of what it is, how they can get it. Um, and the skills that they're, that they're currently developing whilst they're on programme um, currently. 
Um, Dan, is there anything that you'd like to touch on? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you mentioned about the um, insulation. You know, I mean, uh, sort of the, the green area is something that, that we were kind of really sort of moving in at the moment with the uh, sort of we've got some some really good stuff set up over here at Tottenham. And I think you guys have got some some good stuff over over sort of Enfield at the Skills Academy as well, haven't you? You know, so yeah, we've got we've got a lot of of, of this sort of great new new tech um installed and, and sort of ready ready for courses, you know, sort of heat pumps, uh sort of solar solar thermal, solar photovoltaic, you know, um sort of car uh, car charging, you know, we've got loads of um some really good tech over here, which is is just ready for 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 people to 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 move on to the courses, you know. So I think it's, there's a lot of a lot of potential and a lot of scope scope for growth, you know, and and, and good opportunities for for people in the in the community. Fantastic, um, Tony. Is there anything that you would like to touch on? Yeah, I'd just like to reiterate our our curriculum as a whole is well rounded. From traditional profs courses all the way through to uh, building services sector, we we have learning labs at our Tottenham Centre, which do cover uh, various f pathways for renewable energy. And at our Enfield Skills Academy, we have traditional profs courses, introduction courses, and also our new external wall and external wall insulation courses. Um, so we do have a very well-rounded curriculum and also the introduction of retrofit level two and level three courses, which have currently been rolled out this year and then moving into a full phase for next year. We we can be the leaders in, in setting the standards for industry, putting learners into work. Yes, no, I, I totally agree with you. Absolutely agree. Um, the, the retrofit is, has really taken off to, um, it, yeah, it, it's really taken off. It's, it's been successful so far. Um, I, th I believe that the learners are responding very well to it. Um, obviously, there, there, there's always going to be room for improvement, which is just, which is normal. But I think overall, the learners are really grasping it. They're understanding that it's, that it's important um, and that there is a need for it. Um, obviously, um, when we just look at construction as a whole, um, I, I think the traditional ways of building is really coming to, towards an end, um, which I'm sure you guys would agree with, um, and that we are moving into a more energy efficient um, construction era, um, which is extremely positive. Um, we're, we're trying to save the environment, help it, um, making sure that we're not wasting as much materials as before. Um, and, ma and just making sure that, again, um, energy efficiency is, is, is number one. Um, it's not always the goal to, to just go and turn on the heating or turn on the lights. It's just other sources of ways that we can warm up our houses, such as um, air source heat pumps, as an example. Um, th th there's a whole sector that we can really um, expand on and really dive into, which I think is absolutely amazing. So, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Is there anything else that anybody would like to touch on? I think we largely largely covered um, building services, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to, to, to be honest with you, obviously, in terms of crafts, when we're looking at carpentry, um, we're looking at multi-skills, there are elements of, um, obviously, going forward, what, what, what I've found is that, like, the traditional one trader doesn't really exist anymore as well, um, especially on the crafts aspects of things. Um, it, um, when it comes to your to, to crafts, you're mainly looking at a lot of more multi-skilled um, learners. So if, if we look at our multi-skilled course, I, I believe it is well balanced. Um, as an example, what we deliver, um, brick, brick laying is part of it. We've also got carpentry and we have painting and decorating. Um, there are ways to obviously expand that. There are ways to obviously um, juggle it a bit, a bit around. You can put aspects of plumbing in there, et cetera. But I, I, I think overall, one of the things that I would actually like to see for multi-skills would be a level two. Um, I think a level two in multi-skills would actually really open the door a lot more to um, a lot more learners. Um, it will be obviously a lot more in depth, but then you're looking at more of your like property maintenance side of things 
as a diploma kind of um, qualification, which I, I think will be ideal where learners are learning how to like um, change light switches um, and a range of other things. So you're kind of incorporating the crafts and the building services together. Um, I think that side of a qualification at level two is what is what I think will be needed from um, an awarding body such as like city and guilds. And I think there's great value in that as well. So um, yeah, I, I think that is a conversation that obviously we as a department will also take forward um, and kind of see if we can kind of point it in the right direction and ho hopefully be the pilot. Because <laughs> th that would be amazing if we could be the pilot for that. But yeah, I think overall, yeah, yeah, I, th I think I've covered off most of what I can actually cover off. So yeah, thank you. Thanks for letting it, cheers. Cheers, Lennox.